A couple of weeks ago, I found a dead bumblebee laying near my window. Since it is black, it's difficult to get a good picture of it. The bee was covered with dust particles, but one larger particle near its elbow looked like a dead insect. I poked it with a needle and it began to crawl around. It was another of those tick-like creatures, like those I show in my video of the sink drain. I put it on a euro coin to show you the size. Was this creature living on the bumblebee while the bumblebee was alive? Or did some creature discover the dead bumblebee, lay an egg on it, and the egg hatched into this creature? Where do these tick-like creatures come from? What do they become when they grow up? Are they crawling around on us as we sleep, or as we sit in our chairs? By the way, the hairs of a bumblebee are not smooth shafts like human hairs. Here's a view with the light coming from the side and below. And here's the light from above. There are bits of white dust clinging to some of the hairs. I frequently find flying insects in the upper right corner of this particular window. Spiders love this corner also. I don't understand why they are attracted to this particular corner. Some of the insects in this corner are so tiny and fragile that I haven't been able to catch them alive. However, I recently found one sitting on a tabletop, and rather than try to catch it, I put this piece of glass over it to stop it from flying away. It was an orange-colored fly that was a bit larger than those black flies in part one of this video. It has the ability to cling upside down to glass. You are looking straight down into that glass container. Its feet are too tiny to figure out how it is clinging to the glass, but it doesn't look like it has any pads on its feet. It looks like the feet come to a point. How do these feet get a grip on smooth glass? After a while, something came out of its tail. I never captured one of these flies before, so I don't know what this creature is, or whether it's a male or female. Maybe it lays eggs with that tube, or maybe that's a penis. I knocked it off the glass and put a euro coin inside so that you could see its size. Unlike the black flies, which stand with their head higher than their tail, these flies are the opposite. If this fly is typical of their species, then there are thousands of them around the world right now with their tail in the air and twitching that tubular device. As with those black flies, this one also has long hairs on its wings, but the longest are on the trailing edge of the wing. I suppose those hairs are also functioning as part of the wing surface. In an article that I wrote several years ago, I showed a photo of a tiny spider that makes tiny webs and lives in the corners of moldings and cracks and I wondered what insect could possibly be small enough and stupid enough to get caught in such a tiny web. Perhaps it's these tiny flies that these spiders are catching. The spiders are easier to observe than the flies. I put this piece of molding against the wall in my house and after a few months I found insects and spiders on both sides. Here is one of those tiny spiders. A crawling insect wanders into the web. Apparently these spiders don't wait for the creatures to get caught in the web. They chase after whatever comes near them. They are not much larger than the half millimeter diameter pencil lead. Their web doesn't seem to have much of a pattern. 
Maybe the web is more like a tripwire to let the spider know when something is in the area, and then it chases after it. They don't seem concerned that their web is full of dust and lint. If the web is only a tripwire, then the dust might actually help by hiding the spider. In addition to the spider and the larger bugs, I found several smaller insects crawling around on the molding. Here is one with some spots on its body. This is not the same as those bugs that were crawling in the dish with the silverfish, or that were crawling around on the yellow jacket. Here is one that is clear in the front and almost black in the back. Is this the same species as the bug with two small spots? How many different type of creatures are crawling around in my house? I put it on the Euro coin and that makes it easier to see that the black portion is actually a bunch of black spots. So maybe it's just an older version of the bug with two small brown spots. I captured another flying insect from the corner of my window and tried to control it by putting it under a sheet of plastic. It is so dark that it's difficult to see clearly, but it looks like it has pinchers on the front, like an ant, and furry wings. It is lying on its back and trying to bite the plastic. It has four wings. Now it is right side up and you are looking down on its back. Now it's on its side and it is extremely hungry or it just doesn't have much of a body. I put some water around the plastic to hold it down but some of the water got onto the insect. At least now you can see the four wings. Here it is starting to recover from the water. I put it on a piece of black plastic, but that didn't make it any easier to see. To conclude, the point of these two videos is that I can understand why our ancestors believed in spontaneous creation. There is an entire world of tiny creatures that they didn't know about, and I don't think we know much about them either.